is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, nation. Welcome back. Do get in the trunk, the greatest show in the history of the Glass Cannon Network, Troy. That's right. It's better than the Glass Cannon <laughs> podcast by a by long a shot. Mile. And you <laughs> know it. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I am not listening to you. <laughs> I'm not listening to you. <laughs> What's up, Nation? It's great to see everybody. Uh, great to hang out. I am looking forward to getting back into the trunk. Uh, this is just tuning up for me exactly like I like it uh, in these, I don't know what you call them. Because uh, it, it's it's not Cthulian. This, this King and Yellow thing is a different thing. But in both cases, you're talking about research what's going on here, research what's going on here, research what's going on here. And then things just really start getting out of hand. And that's that's the place we're getting into, which, which makes me happy. But um, I am... I don't know. I don't know what to talk about. I, I am. Uh, yeah, it's like all these show opens. How did you guys do this for so many episodes? <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you what I did last night. Last night, okay. I did my first fire pit of the year oh. with the children. Because it's getting into fire pit season. Anybody Good fire signs. pit? Guys, yeah. Troy, are Truman you a fire pit guy out there since you got it? Yeah. Yeah. Big you got a pit? Yeah, I'm a sucker for Instagram ads, and so I bought this uh, <laughs> fancy pants one that uh, it's like it's this beautiful metal. I wish I'd got a bigger one because it's kind of small, but it's what's nice is like when I'm done with it, I just put it in the shed. Yeah, um, but yeah, I I, I, I kind of get way into it. The kids like doing s'mores, so it's a good kids, time. Kids always like s'mores. They they love the s'mores. I'm a little like. I'm a little of two minds on the fire pit, which I hate to say, but I'm just kind of getting to an age where I don't like the smell when I go to bed really? and I'm angry. It's in all my clothes. <laughs> I don't true. know. I wish you I didn't. I was like, wish I could just smell like a campfire all the time and not give a shit like a real man. <laughs> it is. It's but so I'm like, you. It's so nostalgic, though. I feel like I remember being like a teenager and you stay out late and like you do a fire pit or something. And then when you shower the next day, at least like as a woman, I had long hair, but like in the shower, the smell is like intensified, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like so nostalgic for me that I'm like long summer nights and like you finally shower after two days. <laughs> uh, I, get, I get nostalgic uh, from my parents having been uh, avid smokers all growing up. So I'll do a fire pit and I'll just throw just cartons of Marlboro's <laughs> on top of it. Just that the smell, reds, you know, that brings reds. you right back. Mm. <laughs> brings you right back. Oh, right man. Back. Well, they really made sure back then to keep kids out of a room with cigarettes. Like, that was a real right. big thing. Yeah. It was so yeah. funny. Like, every room I was in was just the uh, haze. <laughs> every, fi- oh. every, I think do you back, remember? It's like, I do smell the smoke and I'm just like, oh, that's, that's uh, kindergarten. Do you, do you remember flying, <laughs> <laughs> flying as a kid? There were people smoking on planes. It oh, was yeah. There was a, whole, there were ashtrays in the fucking seats. <laughs> there was smoke <laughs> filling the aircraft. It yeah. was insane what we thought was cool back then. That was so Right. Yeah. <laughs> I always wonder that about now. I think I've said it before on a show. I'm like, what are we going to look back now and be like, that was insane that people thought that yeah. was normal. Using petroleum as fuel? <laughs> you believe we did that back then? It's going to be like leeching. <laughs> Francis, I see you're rocking your uh, Millennium Falcon garb for the show. Properly uh, dressed for tonight's show. I'm always wearing it in my heart. Uh, awesome. it's, 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 it's deep down inside. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, are you liking all of the new uh, Star Wars content? No. And <laughs> controversial take, uh, there's a lot of crap being created in the, oh. in the universe, in the, in, the, in the Star Wars universe. It's really, I mean, you know, I might be a pariah for saying it, but there is a lot of stuff that just should not even be out there. Should not. Should not. But, <laughs> I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I don't want to. I don't want to alienate the nation. Hey man, I'm with you. And I'll nation. go even further, and I'll say Hollywood. Right now, we need 
antitrust legislation yes. for Hollywood Studios Break now. Break them up. Yes. Break them up. I'll, I'll campaign. Stop up. the vertical integration. Break up the studios. Antitrust now. Yeah. Yeah. Is that going to help? Yeah, well, it would help. I, I think, think it would so. help. I feel like Disney owns everyone's childhoods. Like they currently own everybody's childhood. Like that's too much power for one company to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just too much. <laughs> Just too and much. We had, we had like informal antitrust regulations in place because of a su- Supreme Court decision from like the 50s through basically just very recently and it was uh and it did it like it broke up the big studios it kept them from owning their own uh sources of uh, distribution movie theaters and everything and uh like independent cinema art house cinema flourished as a result okay. so but it was never codified so uh, we we need antitrust legislation for entertainment wow that's a whole other podcast in itself. Right? That's a whole other thing. That's a I whole do. other PSA. But we we got the like <laughs> yeah. the tease in here. We got the promo for the PSA mm-hmm. in here. So <laughs> yeah. appreciate that. Skid. That's, season, uh, that's the next season of getting the trunk. We'll be <laughs> yeah navigating the antitrust. The alternate there. reality of what if we did break them up and how yeah. would that play? That's, out? I want to see what kind of movies are being released in this alternate reality. That's what I, I'm very <laughs> curious to see what the entertainment is like. First ever blockbuster that can be yellow. <laughs> what? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? That's the trailer subtitle. Everybody um, coming out of the theater clawing their faces <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> uh man yeah i was that was a risk just even bringing that up with you francis good buddy <laughs> right. i went there but I no did. no it's okay i love you to go there <laughs> i i just i don't feel as strongly i guess because i'm just i just don't watch them so i'm like eh. because to me i'm like there's no point like there is no way you're going to reach what I feel in my heart about that time. So I'm like, why just waste time making myself angry by, by trying true. to watch it? I mean, that's valid. That's totally valid. Like there's, there's no way they're going to approach what it was like that first viewing of star Wars or like empire or even return of the Jedi. Like there's or the gonna... 70th viewing of empire. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Also very, very good. I remember it was in <laughs> sixth grade. Uh, yeah, like, uh, I, yeah, I watched them over and over and over and over and over again. And I think then I, th- I, I like you, I think I'm good, but I, there's part me that wishes that somebody would create more great stuff you know yeah. but it's just so unlikely to be yeah. great like it's just there's too much too much going on there's too much right now especially f- for star wars specifically there's too much canon mm-hmm. that has to be the, the expectation there's certain expectations that have to be adhered to and there is sort of a tim- timidity to making something genuinely new Right. And that's the only way you're going to make something great is by right. taking risks. And there's like very little risk taking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the closest they've come, I think, is Rogue One, which I didn't actually like, but most people did. Yeah, that was probably um, the closest. Yeah. So, but uh, that's even even that was like just full of just fan service. Although and- I'll <laughs> argue the Mandalorian had some really good, interesting takes. Um, yeah. I thought. Yeah. But. The, yeah, it was it was it was timid. It was still very timid. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> well, I understand how Disney feels as a creator myself. Uh, <laughs> I can really relate to their <laughs> their struggles. Uh, I remember doing Alien and being like, you know what, I'd love to do an Alien series with no Alien in it. <laughs> just like with other stuff going on and like I needed three people to strap me down and be like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> You've got three episodes. You better put a xenomorph in it. That's it. <laughs> or you're out of the network. Stop like me crazy. But yeah, but I was like, there's so much new here that you could play with. But people are afraid of it. I was afraid. I was like, what if everyone's like, yeah. I'm watching an alien show. And there's no alien in it. This is dumb. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's bold. It's a risk. <laughs> it's a risk. It's exactly. a risk you take. But yeah, I mean, it's a whole rich, interesting setting universe mm-hmm. that you could yeah. play in. Potentially, there don't, you don't need to have a xenomorph in it, but just the expectation is that you will have them. Yeah. So, but, yeah, people are afraid to defy that expectation. And the xenomorph in and of itself is so story killing like it makes a great story but it shortens the story it's like yeah. it's either this or that and it's over 
You know what right. I mean? Like it's so fast. Whereas if you don't have it, you could tell some interesting stories, you know? Yeah. It also narrows down the kind of story that you can tell if one of those shows up. Right, right. The story is so, about that. Like the story has to be about the xenomorph once one shows up. Right. It is one of the have... greatest movie monsters that has ever been created. And True. it's like all the focus is going to be on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Chekhov's, uh, Chekhov's, uh, Chekhov's, Chekhov's uh, xenomorph. Xenomorph. Xenomorph, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Famous Chekhov xenomorph. Sitting there at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that you guys are taking some more risks uh, in the night floors, uh, going deeper. As, as uh, Dr. Neil Bachman said, the only way through is out or the only way out is through uh the only way out is through so uh instead of doubling back you're pushing forward into this place meeting the night manager Henri de calvados castain and really shaking him down finding his weak spot and just <laughs> ah, making sure that you wrung every piece of information out of him you could and he says this is a normal operating building is sort of what he tries to get across there are tenants they pay rent i take care of their maintenance uh which is all very unsettling uh, to people who are expecting this to be some sort of wild evil fantasy you know especially as uh, roger cumstone said you know it's it's they're all evil they're all evil uh anybody you meet in this place but we meet somebody interesting towards the end of last week's episode as vicky ricci trying to back up the crew who was investigating two marionettes marionettes that appeared in bobby's dream they were on the run they looked very real when they were far away some gunfire happens and then Bobby is or, um, Roger is kneeling over these quote unquote corpses that turn out to be marionettes and uh, what would you call it? Uh, clockwork, like clockwork marionettes with red tissue paper for blood. And it just sort of it makes it seem like everything in here is fake. But then Vicky Ricci watching everyone's back during this investigation sees a body on a gurney long, a, wall, a long way down the hallway and a mumbling voice coming from it and Vicky is drawn to it she begins walking to it as she gets there she hears this man speaking in English talking about New York is New York is where it started or ended or always was she comes around the corner and sees a totally normal looking late 30s early 40s something man who asks her if she's in delta green <laughs> she gives the slow nod and his eyes go wide his breathing starts to hyperventilate and he starts saying or he says my name is michael whitwer i'm a dea agent i was sent in by and as soon as he starts going down that road he starts to be somehow consumed by the floor itself. White light shoots up around him. His entire bed collapses into this small hole to fit through. He's screaming in horror, shrieking in agony. Vicky is thrown back by this horrible uh, scene. And eventually the man is pulled through the floor and his voice is no longer heard. Vicky regathering herself leans over the hole that is still lit there to see a man at an impossible distance in a white mask with the eye holes just empty looking up at her i'm gonna need vicky to start tonight's episode with a sanity check I knew Very that. Yeah, it is. sanity check <laughs> yeah i was rolling so well last episode i was surprised i don't think i failed a single roll and as soon as this happened i was like this is where vicky dies <laughs> oh get out of here 19 Ooh. under 60 uh. my current sanity wow. okay hold in this setting i don't know together. if it's a I don't know if it's a good thing to yeah, because it's to, like you're just to succeed at sanity checks or a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, because I think we might like in 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 the night floors. I think that we might. I don't know what the mechanic is here. Like it may like, we, we may advance through the story more quickly or something. Like if we yeah, do, like I feel like there should be more. We, 
contemplation of what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Lean into it. Well, remember last time, though, we took damage when we left the night floor. Right. <clears throat> right. So, as long as we stay here, we'll never die. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> as Henri de Calvados Castaigne said, we can flash back him in his room, as he just said. Would you like to stay? I could get you a unit. Yeah. Would you like to stay, Vicky, after this <laughs> scene? Oh my God. No. <laughs> this no. is loud enough for all to hear. So all of you guys that are up doing that investigation, if you didn't see Vicky already see her walking away, you now see that she is a ways down the hallway. This white light is shining up and you hear this man screaming and Vicky's right over there. What is everybody's reaction? Start with Bobby, who's not immediately over the bodies. Jesus, I'm still dealing. Bobby's still dealing with the, the fact that he's seeing these bodies from mm -hmm. his dream but he hears the scream he looks over he he has to do something he he he, he looks back towards Cumstone or towards messiah waiting for any kind of prompt because he's shitting himself he doesn't know <laughs> which way to run he, he doesn't want to run towards the scream he doesn't want to look at those bodies but he hasn't like we haven't spoken yet about what uh, Messiah is looking at in the bodies, right? He hasn't. Yeah, divulged. just Messiah has really opened these IDs and seen military identifications, but they are New York State issued IDs. One from 1953, Eric Carter. One from 1955, Robert Bra Burbach, I think. Something Burbank. Like that. Burbank. Oh, Burbank. Burbank. It Burbank. wasn't Burbank. Oh, yeah. you said Burbank. Yeah. You corrected Burbank? yourself to Burbank. Yeah. yeah. Burbach. Burbach. B-U-R-B-A-C-H. Burbach. Messiah. Um, What's going on? So I hear this screaming and I see Vicky has is not there. Maybelline's left, right? I'm at the by the hospital. If you look over, I'm over. You by see that her. Hospital she, bed. she is small to you, though, as she is like some 80 feet down a hallway. I mean, he bolts in that yeah. direction. Do you drop right. the ID, the wallets that are in your hand, and no, just I run? Take them. So you take them. Take them, yeah. And shove them into my jacket, my bomb. Okay, shove them in your jacket and start running toward Vicky. Right. Dun, 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 Bobby's dun, dun, following. Dun, 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 Bobby's dun, dun. following. He, he and just as you, sorry, go sorry, ahead, that, Francis. But Bobby's following, scared out of his mind. Just following. Bobby's following. What's Neil doing? Neil. Neil, I think, because he was sort of lagging behind because he wasn't running. He was just kind of like hustling. So I think he gets to the T intersection after all this has started happening. He looks down, sees the two guys going over the marionette, the clockwork marionette's bodies. And then he turns to the left, which is where he was more interested in because that was where the, the butler went. He looks down that way and he sees the hospital bed and Vicky like at the hospital bed. So that's where he starts going. Okay. So by the time the thing gets like gets crushed and sunk sinks into the floor, I think he's just about there. Okay. So Roger and Bobby are running up. Neil's already there, just behind Vicky. Vicky, you're peering over this thing. What do you do? What what goes through your head after you pass this sanity check? Well, it's almost like when your adrenaline is rushing so much that you go into like a state of calmness. Like when someone is in a horrible accident, but yet at the scene, they are like walking around and like saying thank you to a police officer. And it's like, oh my God, everyone around them is dead. Like, how are they not freaking out? But she sees this eyeless mask glowing almost from the rest of the residual glow. And it, it just, you know, looks up at her and she has this bizarre wave of calmness. And her mind almost goes blank. She is in FBI, like she's in her postal inspector mindset. She was interrogating uh, Castain and she just looks up from the ledge, stands up calmly and turns around because she's faintly hears Ch -ch 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 coming down the hallway and she knows that somebody's running toward her. She turns around. And you see Neil standing right there. Neil, this hole is still open in the hallway. What do you do? Neil comes up 
he leans, he just sort of like lays his hand on Maybelline's shoulder just to like see if she's she's okay. Like he sees her in this like weird almost kind of state of semi-shock. And then he lifts the camera and peers and points it into the hole and takes a photo. Do you look into the hole? Yeah. All right, so you're looking over at what the camera's taking and you see this masked face looking up at you. And just as you pull the button, it goes, and the hole closes up. (laughs) Roll a sanity check. Okay. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Oh, my God. 98. Over 56. 98. Okay. Forgot my dice for today's session. You don't need dice, I don't think. (laughs) I don't think you need (laughs) dice. Where we're going. Uh, And then just at that moment, Bobby and Roger arrive. Roger runs up. Roger, what do you do? Um, Does the hallway end or does it keep going? Uh, The hallway keeps going. It actually ends in a door. So it, it keeps going, but then there's a door on the left, a door on the right, and the door right in the center of the hallway. So this gurney was just in the middle of the hallway. Yes. There's a door right next to where the gurney was, and then a um, door to the left, and then the hallway ends in a door. Roger looks at the door, or catches up very quickly on what happened, um, and then checks the door to see if it's locked. It is not locked. Looks at the rest of the... click. Group, and then opens the door stealthily. Oh. Roll stealth. <laughs> Fifty-five <laughs> under seventy critical success. Crit. Wow. Tithesis. <laughs> you know Roger, dude. Roger does not mess around. <laughs> he slowly opens the door. First thing your awareness picks up is alertness. Why can we not say the word alertness anymore? It's gone from our vocabulary. First thing you notice is the strange, like, antiseptic smell of, like, a hospital. Sterile smell, I guess I should say. You slowly push it open and you see this room is like pretty wide open, a square, multiple medical beds lay in the room, but not, no one is laying on them. And you see six people, three men, three women, all in like medical gowns, like a uh, patient whites. And they are just walking around this room slowly don't seem to notice you a couple of them are mumbling to themselves <laughs> you just peek in it looks it has every indication of being like an inpatient facility basically in the middle of the McAllister. In the middle of the McAllister building. Is there a is there a sign on the door or anything? It's just... Oh, like, yeah, no. No uh, black. There's no sign on the door. Do I see anybody that works there or just patients? You see what appears to just be patients. Okay. And is it one room or does it look like it extends further? It's one room. One large square room. No windows, no doors. Okay. Um, I'll like close the door, but not completely. Like just leave it cracked so I can talk to the team. What do you think? Do we go in and try and get some information? We have to be careful. Maybe these are other agents that lost their minds. Do you know who that was? The DEA agent. Michael Whitmer, do any of you know that name? The name sounds vaguely familiar, but I've encountered a lot of Michaels in my life. 
as as most people. It's a very common name. Uh, do you guys know not know who that name is? Uh, sounds is familiar. Michael Whitbert. Whitbert. Whit- that sounds we? familiar. Yes. Is that our handler? <laughs> nope. Okay. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, Michael that's uh, the name on the ticket. <gasps> oh, the plane that was ticket. the name on the Vicky ticket. Vicky would know that. Vicky yeah. would know that. The plane ticket. That's exactly why. I know oh, you would know that. Oh, God. oh Vicky right. would a thousand. That would send yeah, chills yeah. up her fucking spine. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Holy crap. I thought you yes. guys were just really slow playing me. I'm like, God, no, no, you're no, not no, enjoying no. this adventure Jesus. at all. No, I, I, thought, I, was thinking, yeah. I, I kept thinking of Sam Whitworth, the actor. Yeah, <laughs> he was and then of, like, yeah, I, I, I totally, yeah, yeah. Um, I think on repeating it, then you know, in game, uh, Vicky says, "Do you know that name, <laughs> Michael Whit?" And she stops. Sam is on the ticket. His name was on the. T- his name was on the ticket. Oh my god. The ticket He's from not, 2015. From 2015. The ticket from the future. Paradise, Nevada to Boston, June 6th. What? Let me. Uh, I don't understand what that means. I mean, what? what uh, and he called it the program? Yeah, as if I was part of the program. I mean, he knew Del- Delta Green. Do we call it the program? No, it's not called the program in 1995. That's they call it the program, though, in 2015. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because like the, we're in like a very specific period of yeah. Delta Green, where there's a lot of like particular things going on. Yes, and obviously your characters would not Which know we don't that. know about. Which In the area where your characters are, there's just one Delta Green. It's you guys. You're all operating outside of the law. In 2002-ish, it becomes a recent, a sanctioned government organization that's a black op, right? Like, yeah. and But there are still those that came from the Our 70s, era. 80s, 90s that don't buy in that are like no way i'm not doing any government oversight on this because this cannot be have any like po- politics you know like delta green has to be run by people that only care about getting rid of the supernatural and they're the unnatural i should say and those are called the outlaws so uh in that time so in 2015 the program means the government sanctioned delta green and it sounds <laughs> like michael Whitwer, who was a dea agent might have been a Delta Green agent. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> that means... Okay, okay, okay. That means that there, this time does not exist on the night floors. That means that if he exists in 2015, it existed... Is he dead? I don't... Who knows? I'm having a really hard time wrapping my head around this. Maybe this is all the more reason we should go talk to these people. Or at least look at their charts. See what's going on. See where they're from. Or when. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. One of them might be another Delta Green agent. Maybe they have some idea of what the hell is going on. We have to help. If people are getting trapped in here, we have to help them. Yes. Yeah. Before the floor eats them. Okay, right. let's go. Let's go in. Let's go. Hey, listen, everybody. Be cool. <laughs> Says Roger. <laughs> Thumbs down. Yeah, don't do anything out of the Everyone ordinary. Everyone be chill. <laughs> don't, don't do anything Roger wouldn't do. It's not the curb stomp them right off the bat. <laughs> the door is still open. I just like pulled it uh, so that the uh, door was touching the door jam, and now I open it and we slip in, and then I close it behind us. You slip into this patient facility and close the door behind you, and you see these beds open next to them seem to be there's there's um, bed pans and like like a washing sink all very spare 
just piping, exposed piping running to kind of the things that run water and stuff like that. And the patients are just kind of like milling around the middle of this large square room. And they all seem to be not seeing any of you and out of touch with reality. Are there charts at the end of each bed like there are in hospitals? Yeah. Go up to the first one. You go up to the first one, pick up a chart. It says Timothy Bale. B-A-E-L. Timothy Bale has age, symptoms, you know, a, a whole chart that details uh, this patient. What's going on with Timmy? Um, Timmy is, I apologize. Uh, let me see if I have that detail on me right now. Um, I love live shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man. Timothy Bale. Timothy Bale. Uh, I think I, I had it. I had it. Um, you see, um, suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, night terrors, social anxiety disorder, and depression. And you see a note that says, veteran, two tours in Iraq. Huh. Mm -hmm. And the other, the mannequins were veterans as well. Yeah. We're gonna go to war with Iraq? Why would we do that? You already yeah. did in 95. No, we, yeah, we yeah, did. You're right. I thought it was 94. I thought it was 94. Well, it's good I was to know. There. It's good to know we're still in the war with Iraq. <laughs> still fighting for the Kuwaitis. <laughs> Free Kuwait. Desert Shield. <laughs> um, you can go to another chart if you want. Yeah. Pick it up. But you see it. There's a woman's chart. It says Dorothy Yale. Just says paranoid schizophrenia. Um, hearing voices from electronic devices. That's what it says. Huh. Like the radio? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like radio. The radio. Uh. Can we talk to her? You, there's three women. Oh. The, we'll call her know. name. See who's Dorothy. <laughs> yeah. You say Dorothy. Dorothy. No one responds. Roll search. Twenty-six under. Oh, 26. oh no, twenty-six under forty-two. I also rolled a twenty-six under fifty-three. Nice. Nice. High five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that there are bracelets on some of the patient's wrists that may help you identify them. Okay, we search um, the bracelets of the women to see which one Dorothy is. Okay, uh, luckily enough, you, you go to this brown haired brunette woman, you pick up the arm and you see it says Dorothy Yale on the wristband. Dorothy, can you hear me? Mm, uh, hmm. and she seems to be hearing something that's not your voice and she's looking kind of off in the distance not being responsive at all wave my hand in front of her eyes any response nothing nothing uh, Vicky takes out her notebook um, that she had written in uh, from when she was listening to the radio uh, and she flips finding the page uh, and she starts to read off the numbers that she heard. Because her first thought is that I heard shit on the radio. Um, mm -hmm. And she reads uh, 6429210321645474786. No response. It's useless, Messiah. I, I don't think they're even here. I don't even know if they can see us. Neil is going to 
check the <laughs> charts. Your gun, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Slow. You were like, "What should we do?" Uh, <laughs> Neil is going to check the charts. Maybe as a medical doctor, I might have some insight here. Uh, is there? Are they on any like uh, medication? Does it show they're on any medication or anything? You uh, you go up to one of the charts on the other side of the room. There's like, like three beds, three beds. You go up to one of the charts on the other side, pick it up. You see the name is Dr. Lyra Westover. Oh, oh what? Uh, what? Is she in here? <laughs> wait, wait, that's the presiding doctor of these people? You just see it on a chart. Like on a patient. No, it's a patient name. Oh, it's a patient. It's a patient. So Lyra is a patient, Doctor oh. Lyra Westover, and we, but we wouldn't. That name wouldn't no, mean anything. No, we don't know. That way, yeah. it would mean something to Roger. <laughs> no, it, it would. You're it too something? young. No, you don't know yet. what's going on Not in his yet. head. Uh, yeah, maybe, uh, but I mean, you oh. did find oh, right. a, a piece of a play that mentioned that name. I don't know if Neil right. knows that or Roger's the one who found it. I'm not sure if he logged it and didn't tell anybody. Whatever, but you just see that name, and you see. Sleep disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, delusions of sanity, essentially. And then you see a treatment recommendation for, um, uh, let's see how to put it in like a doctor way. I don't know. But basically what you read is that like they're determined to get her uh, well, not through medication, but through like... Uh, therapy, essentially. Therapeutic, okay. Therapeutic uh, means to cure her, and you see it is signed, and you you do see the physician, uh, which is Doctor Richard Dallin, D A L L A N. I have a weird oh. feeling I might know what's going on here. These all. Agents? Do you think these are all agents? I think so. I think you and I have the same idea. I think that Dr. Green has been sending people like us in here for a long time and maybe times that have even happened yet in our world and they've seen things and they've heard things and they've experienced things that have deteriorated their mind and the sick people that inhabit this universe willingly think they can simply treat them and assimilate them into their society and if we don't figure this shit out we'll be the ones wandering around this ward we'll be the ones turning into clockwork mannequins we'll be the ones sucked down a hole Bobby is starting to hyperventilate. We need to get out of here. We need to find a way out of here now. This realization by Roger, if it's shared with everybody, everybody needs to roll a sanity check. If, if in fact, Delta Green is sending you in here and that you're not going to get out and you're going to be a patient here, if this theory is correct, that would be pretty frightening. Success, 39 under 61. Okay. Success, 48 under 60. Okay. Failure 58 over 40. Oh. Okay. Uh, another failure for Dr. Bachman 73 over 56. <laughs> it's getting bad. I'm losing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's next? I still want to go to this party. Ah, forgot about the fucking oh, party. I forgot about the party. I thought this about was the party. party. Is this not the party? Are you yeah, not having fun? <laughs> yeah, this is a terrible party. <laughs> this is not the party. This party fucking sucks. <laughs> this place is dead anyway. Let's go to the I other beat party. My pants. Yeah, let's fucking get out of here. <laughs> um, All right, so we. Because where Vicky was when the uh, Whitmer disappeared was on the way to the end of the hall where the party was, right? 
Well, no, it's on a different floor, but oh. we're trying to find an elevator or stairs. Right. Okay. There's also but, the way past the original bodies where the gas mask guys went. Right. Yeah. So this this hallway. I mean, do, are you still in the room with the patients, or do you leave? Stay there for uh, a second. We're safe in there. Okay. Out. I mean, we're safe as anywhere. Safe as anywhere with six yeah. <laughs> catatonic time travelers. Sure. <laughs> let's, look, let's just thoroughly search this room and uh, see if there's anything else of import before we leave. Okay. okay. You don't find anything else of import. Right. Asked and answered. So we need to figure out which way we're going to go. We're going yeah, we to figure out how to get bodies. to Or we party. split up. Oh, that's a terrible Split idea. Up? <laughs> We're gonna two die. Of us, two of us go one way, two of us go the other. You seriously are out of your fucking mind, Messiah. <laughs> We're not splitting up. Are you kidding? Did you just see? No way. The floor open up in front of me? What do you think? Safety in numbers? This is like the Hotel California. You can check out anytime you want. <laughs> But you can never leave. <laughs> he starts singing. Like, yep. <laughs> Two of the potion patients start singing "Hotel California." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good sign. They know it. <laughs> Such a lovely uh, place. Should Roger walks up to one of the patients. It's actually one of. Does one of them say Lyra Westover on the bracelet? Oh. You go looking. Yeah. Oh, Something God. about that name is just like tickles the back of Roger's brain. He knows he saw it in the play, but when he saw it in the play, it also like struck a, a memory that he couldn't quite place. place. And so when he, uh, when Murnau reads that, he's like, you guys are talking, but he's also just kind of looking at wrists. Why don't we go back to the evidence board? Let's look at a few things. Oh, um, oh let's, let's take a look at this, the play in question the page of the play in question um, that featured a Dr. Lyra Westover, a Dr. Westover. Examination room. Oh, oh well. All right, so... And Ri Richard, we also know that name. Do we? Richard, wait. Yeah, Richard? it's in the... Yeah. Was that with Richard... No. no. Dr. Richard Dallin is listed on the sheet ah, as the Dallin. attending okay. physician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not satisfied with that answer, Richard. I think there's something. Else. What do you think they call it? Intuition or could be my extensive treatment. I'm very open with you. Let's move on. Oh, it's weird because, like, in this one, Westover is the one is in the charge. Is the doctor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The dream. I don't have time for this. Dr. Westover gets up to leave. Wait. Richard adjusts his hat and coughs um, about three months ago. Very good, Richard. Dr. Westover returns to her seat, begins to look around the table. That's strange. Where's my pen? The white door opens. Enter. Barbus. Barbus enters. It almost seems like now if we know that Richard is perhaps the doctor treating these patients that if Westover had already lost her mind but she still thought like she was the doctor and yeah. doc this Dr. Richard was like humoring her because then she goes yeah. to look for a pen she doesn't have a pen because they take away all sharp objects yeah. Um, yeah. and so the guy comes in and is like what's going on here yeah I mean it sounds like a yeah maybe yeah. Barbus is the superintendent Barbus it has a very biblical Sound to it, Barbus. Yeah, like Barabbas. It sounds yeah. bad. Barabbas, Barabbas sounds kind of scary. It is right. a sinister sounding name, yeah. S yeah. Spiky. Spiky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And just <laughs> spiky. It's an itchy Stabby name. shotgun comes into this. Stabby McShotgun. Stabby McShotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Stabby's a cool dude. <laughs> He's a pacifist, man. Just misunderstood. <laughs> Darth Murderer comes into the room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, wait, so, uh, Comstone, are you looking for Lyra Westover in the yeah, room? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, once Murnau said that, he's like, it's that name again, and just begins looking about. And you see one of the women has a bracelet that says Dr. Lyra Westover. <laughs> and he looks up at the woman 
let's say I'm a, a viewer watching this show, is it the Lyra Westover from season one? It is the Lyra Westover from oh, season man. one. All right, so Roger looks at her and... Uh, and he, she looks up at you. Just like... <laughs> these like quick scenes in his head of moments they had, but everybody's faces is blurred out. And again, he doesn't really know what's real and what's a dream. She looks at you and... There's some recognition in her face. Yeah, she would know. She would know and Roger she, for sure. Totally. And she's God like, damn. Roger. <laughs> oh! No way. <laughs> do I? Do I know you? Huh? What are you doing here? Who are you? How do you know me? How do I know you? She seems to be lost for a second, then comes back to your eyes. You have to get out of here. (laughs) Her eyes widen. You have to get out of here. Where is here? How do I get out? I don't know. You have to find a way. How do you, you know can't me? help me? How do you know you me? Get out. How do you know me? You, we work together. You know me. You can't help me unless you get out of here. Help me. Please. Roger just releases her. Turns back to the others. We need to get out of here. (laughs) Agreed. We gotta get back to the... Oh, sorry. the, The night manager? I don't know. We need to get out of here. As soon as you let her go, she just goes back to like, as if you were never there. It's just this brief moment of clarity. Um, we should go. Yeah. Yes. I think if they look around, Neil is gone. Okay. All right, let's let's go. Well, focus was on this happening. <laughs> let's cut to Neil. Neil. Focus Where the Neil. Hell is Neil. <laughs> so Neil is just like he he slips out like while this is going on, and he keeps heading down the hallway that the Whitworth where the bed was, heading in the direction. His thinking is the the butler went this way, mm-hmm. so he's going to keep going down that hallway until he finds something. All right, so we cut to Neil, and he has left the room during this Westover uh, interaction, and you're walking toward the end of the hallway, and there, it, there's a door to the left, and then it, the hallway ends in a door. I check the door to the left. And it's locked. Check the door at the end of the hallway. And it's unlocked. I open it. You open up the door and you see a short hallway, very short, and another door. I like only like, you know, five feet or something like an in-between sort of space. Okay. I open the door fully wide open, walk in, camera at the ready, and walk towards the door at the far end. You walk toward the door at the far end and if you're going to reach out to try to open it, it's kind of like the other one's got to get let go, basically. Yeah, I let go of that. So it slowly <sighs> closes. Okay. Click. And you open this other door and you see a long hallway and what looks like a child 
at the end of this long hallway. Uh-uh. Get out, Neil. Get out. <laughs> and it's just alone standing at the end of the hallway. Facing me it looks or like, facing yeah, away It looks like me. a girl, a little girl facing you. Okay. Uh, he loves this image. Classic <laughs> film image. Yeah. <laughs> takes, a, takes, a, takes a Polaroid of this, this right here. And then he starts walking down the hall towards the girl. You start walking toward it and you see the girl starts walking toward you. As soon as you start crossing that that path and it's walking and as it gets closer, you see that the little girl is wearing a clockwork mask. <laughs> oh, no. And it looks exactly like the drawing of the little girl in the book that you read, the children's book oh, that you read. Oh, yes. Um, oh, is it called Maud Goes to the Masked Ball or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Maud Goes to the Masked Ball. So as you get closer, you start hearing this faint sound of music. And it seems like it's coming from the girl. And uh-huh. it seems like it is like a, that, that tinny manufactured music of like a music box, like a small music box. And you hear this ting, 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 kind of like tune uh, coming. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be coming from the child. And as you get closer, you see that its movements are awkward. And you see that it is, uh. in, in fact, like fully clockwork. Immediately no. <laughs> Immediately no. Are you running and screaming yet? Or are you still just walking toward this thing? Just out of I'm, I st- when it when when it started walking towards me, I stopped. Okay, and it just continues walking, and you hear pa bum 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 pa bum, pa bum, pa bum. <laughs> and it stops, maybe four or five feet away from you and you can see his brown curly hair that looks like a wig put on to this little girl's clockwork face and all of her limbs seem clockwork and she stops and the music stops and she turns around and when she turns around her back in the center of her back just goes skunk and slots open and there's a small piece of paper sticking out of the back. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, like a golem. Uh, oh, God. All right. So I like, again, like <clears throat> take another photo. I love that you're getting and pictures of all this. You yeah. have like 50 <laughs> Polaroids in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. Insane. It's just like this stack of like these thick Polaroids. <laughs> and his heart is like in his throat right now, but he like with a shaking hand, like he reaches out and takes the paper, reaches out to grab the paper. If you'll please go ahead to roll twenty. Oh no, I don't <laughs> want to. Oh, I don't want to I see, see a picture of the little girl. I don't, I don't want to see what this is. Let's just let's just look where the play was, where the Westover play was, where we were just looking at that. And okay. this, it, when you pull it out, you realize it is not just a piece of paper but is an envelope. <gasps> Ian Wait. Frederick de Craig, a prisoner 125101. What? Is what it says on it. <laughs> it's an envelope with that <laughs> written on the front of it. A sealed envelope? Sealed envelope. Yeah. Uh, oh They're all prisoners. Okay. Everyone's There's something inside prisoner. of it, obviously. All right. Oh, he, he takes note of the name. And he uh, tries to carefully open the envelope without tearing it. Go to the back side, start to carefully open it. Give me a dex times five roll so as to not tear it, <laughs> but successfully open it. Ooh, O2. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. So you see this, this seal starts to come up easy enough without ripping the paper. And you actually go along the whole way without tearing the paper. You open it up and there's sort of a faded card inside, yellowish in color. We see Neil pulling this out and again to roll 20. 
oh, this is what invitation. comes out of the envelope. Oh, no. Join <laughs> us at the Palace of Masquerade to celebrate the new king. Come uh, to dine, come to dance, come. <laughs> and we cut back to Roger and Bobby and Vicky, who have no idea this is happening. Well. Sydney, Sydney. You have no idea this is happening. Yes, okay, yes, I see yes, you Joe. overreacting over there. Yes, Joe. <laughs> you guys turn around. Neil's gone. Where the hell is Manau? Where's Manau? Bobby, I thought he was with you. Yeah, he was. He was right here. I don't know okay, where. Okay, so he where went. is he? We were we were look we were looking at the lady. I I I don't know. I don't know. Guys, guys. He's on his own journey now. He's been, doing, he's been doing this. He's been going off in trances. That's how we ended up here. I, Vicky opens the door to the hallway to peek down to see if she sees Neil. You open the door and you see... Uh, no, you. yeah, you don't see Neil. You open the door and turn to your right and you see a doorway at the end of the hall that Neil had just passed through and then a doorway on your left. You look to the left, you see a long hallway and you do not see two bodies that were there previously. Huh, huh. It's just an empty hallway. Lord. Uh, okay. She walks back out into the hallway. She's done being in this patient room. She's like very freaked out. Um, um, yeah, we're all following out to the hallway. I feel like follow. we all got to find Murno. Yeah. yeah. Roger uh, gives one last look to Dr. Lyra Westover. Just sees her wandering around. Wonders if that's their fate. Closes the door. Mm. Vicky motions that the bodies are gone. She points down the hallway. And you see have, no bodies. We have to... Let's go check it out. Oh, okay. Let's go check it out. That was our original plan until you went solo. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> I turned around and you were gone. And now Murnau is gone. We can't stick leave without him. We can't Both leave you stick here with me. Him. <laughs> we'll find him. All right. Let's go down this hallway. Can I get one of those? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and Vicky is pa packing her cigarette. <laughs> I didn't even realize she was doing it. Uh, she looks up. Yeah, sure. And she hands two cigarettes. <laughs> what brand is this? <laughs> Roger. What brand is this? It's American Spirit. Thanks. Why are you making that face? They taste it. What do you? What's your, what's your type? What do you got? They're fine. They're, they're fine. They're better for you. They say. It's it's natural. I I was thinking maybe I should switch to something natural. All natural. Yep. Yeah. Let's go down the fucking hallway. <laughs> All right. So you head back to where the two bodies were previously. Any yeah. sign of anything there? No. You get down there, it's just a doors. nice plush carpet. There isn't even so much as a fragment of loose red tissue paper. It's just nothing there. And there's no doors on that side of the hallway, right? There is doors on that side of the hallway, oh, yeah. There are, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like an apartment building. Like, there's kind of yeah. doors everywhere. They're not necessarily constant. There's only a few per hallway, but like, yeah, there's still two doors along this hallway. Uh, she says, do you think maybe Mona went went back over here and did the same thing we did. We should just check, right? Yeah. yeah. Might as well check the doors. Yeah. All right. Roger, you want to take the lead? I mean, fuck, I keep calling you Roger. Messiah, you <laughs> yeah. want to take the lead? I don't know who you are. Yes. Dude. Yes, Maybelline. Oh, actually, Roger did tell me his name. Yeah, I thought you guys oh, had that in the oh. library or something. He no, no. accidentally slipped his name. Told you that his name. name is Roger Moore comes to <laughs> <laughs> All I said was that was named after Roger Moore. Roger M-O-R-E. Yeah, he said I'm named Roger Moore. I said, is your name Roger? And you said, no. <laughs> um, check the door on the left. Knock, knock. Try the handle. You check the door on the left. 
It's locked. Door on the right? Door on the right, also locked. This could be people like the old man. I'm happy to break these down, but let's just keep moving. I don't think Neil would have broken a door. I mean, Myrna would have broken a door down. It's kind of your thing and not really his thing. Yes, he's not strong enough physically. Uh, I was going to say he's smart. <laughs> <laughs> this way. <laughs> Gestures. Pointed, he pointed his gun. <laughs> Gestures. <laughs> yeah. This a disgusting cigarette. All right, you come to the... You <laughs> You come to the end of that hallway and it is a T intersection. So, I mean, it's really maze like you get to the end of this hallway and it goes left. I'm sorry, left and right again. Right, make sure if you go that way. I think you're not going to go this way. <laughs> 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 obsessively crushing Sucking on this would do about Make sure before you go. Here's another one. I give him another thing. <laughs> Any doors on either of them or we just, they just seem to go on? They go on and there's doors on both sides. But there's there's more than two. It's like a, they're long hallways in both both directions. It's same thing. I think we should just go down. Yeah, go, we'll doors. go to the right first. Are Did you knocking? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, we're no, not. No. We're just trying the no. handle. We're yeah, just, yeah, just trying handles. <laughs> knocking. <laughs> yeah, hello. Hello. <laughs> Are now. Are you decent? <laughs> okay, Roger. You go up to the first one. Say on the right. You try it, and it is not locked. It's unlocked. Stealth. Stealth. Ooh. 79, and I believe I have an 80. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. 79 over 70. Oh, oh shit. Oh. 79 over 70. Um, you go to open the door, and it opens, and you hear... Uh, I'm sorry. It opens, and you kind of like knock it into the wall on the far side it gets away from your hand and just boom into a wall right like 90 degrees it just it hits a wall and similar to what uh, Murnau saw it's just a couple feet and then another door think of it like a like a you know how like you use a stairway door sometimes on a floor yeah, it's like you it's open nice. a door small hall and then another door it's like that you open it up and then there's just another door right there foyer um, check that second door also unlocked. Pop open. This. Pop open. And almost as if you open it, move through it, and close it before you can even before you can even look. It's almost like you lost time, like in a dream. You open the door and you just and you're on the other side of it and it closes behind you. And as you have this like brief momentary book, like losing time, you feel a presence right next to you. <laughs> Ro um, Roger. Just with l lightning reflexes. pulls out his gun and draws it on the person next to him. You pull out your gun and you see hunched over with a shawl over her shoulders <laughs> is this old senior citizen woman with white poofy hair, a shawl and a cane and you whip and she, she just, you pull a gun on her. And she looks up at you, doesn't even seem phased by the gun, just looks right at you and says, Were you coming out of Mr. Bowman's apartment? Roger um, puts the gun uh, away, like under his jacket, but still in his hand. Uh, yes. Yes, I was. We were having coffee. <laughs> coffee. But I thought Mr. Bowman passed away. I just said I was coming out of his apartment. What were you Didn't doing? Didn't say I was there? having coffee with him. 
Oh, s sorry, honey, I misunderstood. Uh. How did Mr. Bowman die? I'm, I'm not sure, but I think it was because of a broken heart, honey. And she starts to like shuffle by you. She's like, his wife died and it was very sad. And she just starts to like keep walking, but you, you're trying to talk to her and she's like kind of ignoring you. Hey, um, um, how did she die? I knew her as well. Oh, it was cancer. Yeah, terrible thing, terrible thing. Were you a member of the family? No, no, just, uh, just an old friend. How did you get in his apartment? It's a long story. Do you need help getting back to your door? No. No. That's very sad. Very yes. sad. Very and she sad. she turns her back to you and, like, continues shuffling down the hallway. Okay, and Roger just, like, keeps his distance, but he's just slowly following her. Is Vicky there? Is Vicky behind him? Yeah, are we, we're... You She's saw you door. saw him walk through a door and a door closed behind him. And he just disappeared. Well, the door just closed behind him. What do you yeah. do? I, I mean, I think she would follow him through that door. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you go to touch the door and give me a sanity check. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, Jesus. 38 under 60. Still oh, doing wow. okay. Are you? Oh no. Oh Jesus. <laughs> you open the door, click, and it opens into an entire ballroom. Oh. You're at some sort of side service entrance to a massive ballroom and a oh large party seems to be happening. Oh my god. <laughs> there are people well-dressed, dancing on a dance floor. There's tables all around. You've opened it into this large space. You see butler hors d'oeuvres being walked around. As you look toward the left side, you see a raised stage and what looks like a bride and groom on it. And Vicky starts having flashes to her dream. Oh no. The room is laid out exactly like your wedding reception. Uh, oh my god she as she's scanning the room i think because the dream is kind of like popping into the forefront of her mind she's looking for that table that she was sitting at uh talking to was she talking to christopher and she um, saw the guy she was talking to abigail she was talking to Abigail. Oh, at the table. Because, and then they yeah, left. Christopher and the guy got up and were, like, getting drinks and flirting with the girls and all that stuff. I think she's kind of scanning for that exact setup. Like, she thinks maybe she's just having a weird hallucination. Mm-hmm. You, you blink a couple times. Bobby, you see this, too. Okay. I was going to say, am I behind? I'm like, I'm looking you at think, this. You think right. this might be the party. And okay. you're just, like, coming in a sneaky side entrance. Vicky, you look toward where that table was and yeah exactly like that skin. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what is happening here it's the shining it's the scene from the shining uh, you open up and you look and you see at one of the, the table in particular you know the exact table to look at and you see what looks like a woman that looks exactly like you <laughs> not in the face but just from behind has gotten up and is walking away urgently toward away from you toward the double doors at the front of this ballroom and you see a man with a briefcase walking out the front door so like you're observing your own dream that was observing your own wedding and it's all like <laughs> twisting around in your mind what do you do uh she goes she she starts walking like towards the woman to the same area and she hears Bobby you know like 
hyperventilating uh, behind her. Hyperventilating, uh, absolutely. Uh, like, what are you doing, Bobby? I, well, I've got like, my gun out and I'm just following. I'm just like, you, don't, don't leave me. Yes, don't leave me. <laughs> don't, don't leave me, Bobby. She's scared. She says, she says to Bobby, she starts <laughs> walking. I've seen this. I've se- this already happened. This happened in a dream. I, I think I can find out where what? Abigail is and who Wait, it is. Who? Follow me, follow me. Where? Okay. She- <laughs> now, as she's walking, Bobby, hmm, you look around at this strange party and you think maybe this is the party. Maybe this is how we're supposed to talk to the superintendent, something you wanted to do. Vicky is of one mind. She's moving across the dance floor. But as you're walking, you look around and you see that pretty much everybody in here are is a series of clockwork marionettes. And all of them have strings that are going up into the ceiling as they're all like dancing. Oh, God. Uh, (laughs) Bobby's shooting himself. (laughs) Bobby is shooting himself. (laughs) So, Bobby, roll a sanity check for me. Oh, God. 26. Ooh, wow. 26 under 48. Wow. Nice. That's, That's crucial. Uh, that's crucial. Uh, okay, uh, what what does he do? Um, so he's he's seeing that these are mannequins. Yeah, they're mannequins all mannequins. Being but like it seems like Vicky doesn't know this. She's just running through the room, basically. Uh, he looks up. Is there anything connecting the strings to what, what's up there? No, the strings go into blackness, but they all seem to be moving. Something is controlling them up there, but what it is you cannot see, and yet, yet you passed your sanity check. <laughs> For the audio audience, I used quote fingers. <laughs> Vicky, uh, he, 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 he calls out to Vicky, Vicky, Vicky. Wait. He calls out to Vicky, and Vicky is basically gone. In the time that you have just like looked for this, she has chased something out the front double doors of the ballroom. And you see her now out of the ballroom and leaving toward the right. Bobby follows. Bobby's got to We follow. go back to Vicky. Vicky, you see the man with the briefcase far ahead in the hallway turn into a door. You see yourself following that man. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, your body collapses on the floor in the middle of the the room and it's just sitting there. Now it's some distance away. Imagine your dream again. Yeah. You are standing right outside the door. Yeah, exactly. And see Abigail. And see Abigail. You're standing exactly where Abigail was. And you feel this chill go through your body. She looks around, like, waiting for Abigail. She thought she would see Abigail or get some information, and she looks back through the double door, back towards the party, back down the hallway. Nothing. Nothing. (laughs) She just (laughs) slams her hand against the wall. And Bobby Uh, catches up. You catch up to her. What do you do, Bobby? What the hell is going on? Who who are you chasing? <laughs> what are you chasing? I I thought that I was I thought that I was going to see Abigail. Oh. oh I'm, I thought that that was me. That room is full of mannequins. They aren't people. What? They and are Vicky, not you look back people. and you now see the strings rising up to the ceiling and that there's no people. You see, you can look even beyond to the stage, the raised stage, and you see a bride and a groom just... All right, she's going to run towards what she thought was herself, the collapsed doll. Okay. You run up towards the collapsed doll and you see a mannequin with red tissue paper coming out of the stomach. And it is it lo- it is wearing clothes that you wear. It has hair exa- a wig exactly like yours. <laughs> Roll a sanity check. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Fifty-one <laughs> under sixty. 
Ooh. Wow. Nicely done. Ice cold veins right there. I mean, I think I think because you already showed her that they were mannequins. She expected to see a mannequin, but it's still fucking creepy. This is all the same. And she's pissed. Like, the dreams, like, everything. And she, I think she, like, grabs, like, where the strings are. And she's trying to, like, yank the strings down from the ceiling and rip her body free. There's from no whatever. strings on the mannequin. What? There's no oh. strings on your mannequin. What? I will say, though, that the man with the briefcase went into a door up and to the left that you saw. <sighs> she touches, like, the tissue paper stomach and, like, touches her own stomach and looks at Bobby <laughs> and then just says, let's fucking go. And she sprints <laughs> towards the door. <laughs> gun out, gun out now. <laughs> let's, go back, let's go back to Neil. Neil, you've opened this invitation looked at it, read it, and now you feel like you have an invite to the party. Yeah. I think he... Now he's like that he has this thing sort of jars him and he, like, stops for a second. He's just like, I gotta get the others. I have to, like, get... This is how we, we will all get in as a group. So he he stops and thinks it's just like what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like why am I doing this? Why did I do this on my own? Like why did I split off from the group? He takes out a cigarette, it starts like lights it up. Fucking a. And he's just like staring at the little girl and and the envelope. And he like turns and like opens the door that he came through, and if and then goes like to the the other door like at the end of that short hallway that should be there okay um roll a sanity check fifty six which is my sanity exactly oh. fifty six is your sanity <laughs> exactly oh. Oh. <laughs> uh you open up the door and you see a long hallway that is wider and does not look anything like the hallway you came from. <laughs> so it's gone where you just were. Okay. So now it's like, this is where panic would set in <laughs> because it's like, now I feel trapped and lost. So then, but he keeps after a moment of that, of like almost of letting himself feel that panic for a moment he keeps repeating in his head the only way out is through and he like pats the invitation in his pocket and he just starts walking down that that corridor okay he begins walking down the corridor let's go to roger Roger, you just, you're following this old woman as she's shuffling down the hallway. She turns a corner. She goes out of your sight for a moment. Do you continue following her around the he corner? Picks up the pace a little bit so he doesn't lose her. Picks up the pace a little bit. And when you come around the corner, you see she is like strangely far down for how far she was walking a second ago maybe 20, 30 feet down the hallway and she's just opening up a doorway and slowly walking into it. Uh, Roger will like, uh, excuse me, excuse me, one more question. And she just disappears out of sight and she click closes the door behind her. Gets up to the door. And I'm imagining I pass by several other doors on the way there. Mm-hmm, two, two other doors. And the hallway keeps going. Mm-hmm. Very disorienting now. It's starting to get like you don't know which direction you're facing. Um, he'll go to the next nearest door. Actually, he's going to check her door. Is it unlocked? Well, what's your objective? If it's unlocked, I'm going to go in. To what? 
her room. The door okay. I saw her go ahead and roll a sanity check. Fail 98. Oh, mm. I think that's what I rolled last episode on a fail. Did you roll a 98? Holy smokes. Thanks. So. You, op- you open up the door and you see this small, warm, kind of cozy apartment. And she's in there and she's kind of startles as you open the door. Oh, what are you doing here? It's all right. I spoke with Henri, the night manager. Yeah. What did he have to say? He had to say a lot. I'm actually, uh, considering getting a unit in the building. Oh. Well, I didn't know I was meeting a new neighbor. And she starts, like, walkie shuffling over to you. Yes. Didn't want to be rude. If you ever need to borrow some sugar, I want you to know you have a friend in me. Oh, what's your name, sweetheart? My name? Yeah. John McEnroe. <laughs> John McEnroe. John McEnroe? <laughs> John McEnroe. Unbelievable! John McEnroe. Somehow more ridiculous than Roger Comstone, your real name. John McEnroe. <laughs> well, it is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. McEnroe. <laughs> Best of luck. Uh... Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to my needlepoint. And she's kind of like, here's your hat. Get out of here. Um, can I just ask you a personal question? Well, okay. Are you a uh, part of the royal bloodline as well oh no not me not me i'm sorry to say are you well i don't think so but but maybe (laughs) maybe oh why did you you choose to come here Oh, oh, why did... Because I can. Because you can. Because you like it it here. Oh, yes. Very much. Where were you before you came here? I've always been here. (laughs) Right. I've always been here. (laughs) (laughs) Want to be my neighbor? (laughs) <laughs> all right well i don't want to take up too much of your time before i leave do you mind if i use your bathroom sure and she sort of like shuffles back just until you get your unit up and running i appreciate it and if you ever need to use my bathroom you come on by okay and you walk into this bathroom uh, and it has all the makings and appearance of a bathroom, but uh, there's there's just no evidence of it Use. being used yeah. at all. They People don't on. eat. They don't use the bathroom. Does water come on when I turn on the faucet? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, medicine cabinet, nothing inside? Empty. Um, I, I, I turn the water on and uh, leave it running and I open up the door and just see like is there another room like similar to what the night manager had is it the same layout as his apartment it is the same layout as his apartment yeah so there's another and there is a bedroom you feel like that leads to the bedroom yeah is that door open or closed it is open it's a jar alright I'm just gonna leave that open, and I'm gonna try and stealth down into the bedroom. What okay, think, Sam? roll stealth. <laughs> play with fire. Play with fire, beside. Yeah. Thirty-six under um, seventy. Cool. Okay, I rolled a twenty-six, so that is a success, and 
you know you can move down into this bedroom and she's just like mm-hmm, 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 out in the living room has no idea you're going in there so i slide down there and i'm trying to move quickly now um, but stealthily because i don't want to cause a scene i just mm-hmm. want to look in the bedroom and uh just very quick look anything i want to look at the walls i might drop down and look under the bed um anything that jumps out at me well you walk in and you see uh i mean it jumps out to you so fast and so hard you walk in and you see a a, a typical bedroom with like a vanity with like a big mirror and uh like a little old lady bed and then next to (laughs) next to the bed and all these kind of clothes you see the wall is cracked (laughs) open and there are tools like a sickle and sh- and a shovel and like mining and digging tools leaning up against the wall and there's all this like dust and dirt and grime on the floor just outside the wall in the no, bedroom and no windows no windows is she trying to get out <laughs> digging tunnels. Tunnels. <laughs> trying to get was this okay. something was it something like that necessitated something happened that necessitated a repair having to be made it's a mess the wall's a mess right well it's cracked open and it's hollow like Is there anything inside oh yeah <laughs> roger, inside. roger go. walks oh, up god don't go and we'll cut to Bobby and uh, <laughs> Vicky. Uh, got to. Got to. Jesus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's approaching this hall and this old lady's wall. What is going on? What is happening? There's bodies in there. Like, you know, there's like bodies in there or something. <laughs> something, something horrific. Some I'm picturing like up. spider webbing and she's like a fucking spider person. I'm just thinking of the <laughs> yeah. worst this is like, possible the, outcome. It's the creepy Desiccated children. Desiccated children. Uh. <laughs> All right, Vicky, you approach. Uh, the um, the man with the briefcase moved up, moved into this door. Uh, go ahead. I think I'm going to tempo this a little bit. Uh, might be a little too much, but like, let's do it. Go ahead and give me a sanity check. Mm. Oh, this this is going to be bad. Mm. Oh no. Sixty seven over sixty. Oh. oh. 67 over 60 you open up the door that he walked into and you see that it was in the middle of this hallway so this doesn't make any sense but you open up this doorway and it's just a long hallway another long hallway and you see him in the hallway and he's walking like quickly away from you and he actually turns his head for a second and you catch a little bit of a shadow of a profile and he's got like a fedora on and this like suit and he's holding a briefcase and he turns away from you again and starts jetting down the hallway. I I mean, she lost sanity because she's so confused. And how much do I lose? You do not lose sanity. You don't don't tell me yet. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Fuck. Um, (laughs) She is, she kicks off her shoes and she is full on football player sprinting down the hallway, like head forward. Like she is ready to tackle a person. She's in cop mode. Cop mode. And her heels, she kicks off her heels, clack, clack. And she is just sprinting barefoot down the hallway. (laughs) Okay, awesome. So all of a sudden you see this dude getting the sense of this and he like looks left, looks right, and then grabs a door on the right and just like shoulders it in and closes the door behind him. She does the same thing. Goes, grabs the door, boom, opens it up. You see another hallway, and he's running. She's running. She's. What's she, Bobby doing? Is is he sticking with her? He's like, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Just like she's. What's happening? He just sees her drop her drop her shoes and sprint, and he's just like, well, what the? Fuck? And he just follows. He just follows. He, he's all when he can she, do. When she opens the second door. Uh, how far away is he? Like he's, is she gaining on him at all? No, but you're not she's losing gonna, him. She's going to take out her gun and she's going to say, stop or I shoot. She screams, stop or I'll shoot in the hallway. And he just turns to another door, opens it and walks in. <sighs> Fuck. He's out of your sight again. <laughs> she sprints out. Yeah, she sprints. Yeah. 
What I hope Lab is behind me. What are yeah. we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> scared out of my life. You keep chasing. You, he had closed this door behind him. You go up. Boom. Bam. Boom. Roll sanity check. Uh. Oh. 26 under 60. Nice. Wow. She's used to this now, this move. Yeah, yeah. 26 under 60. Boom! You open up this door. Gun comes up. No sign of a dude in a briefcase. And you're pointing your gun right at Neil. Oh, shit. And he's just wow. standing, walking down the middle of this hallway. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls it back immediately. Pulls it back. Murnau, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fucking fuck? I got an invitation. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Where'd he go? Jesus Christ. Where'd he go, Murnau? Where'd he go? Who was? What, what are you talking about? The guy with the briefcase with the hat. Where did he go? Did I see a guy with a hat and a briefcase? No, you saw this opened up into a wider hallway than the other ones you were in. And you said the only way out is through. And you just started walking. And you were just walking down this hallway. There was a door near the end. And all of a sudden it burst open and Vicky came out of it pointing a gun at you. And Bobby didn't see the guy he was chasing, right? She was chasing. Yeah, guy. yeah, you saw him. Oh, he did. Okay, okay. All yeah, right. you saw what he was, what she was chasing. Oh, okay, I'm sorry okay, if I wasn't okay. clear on that. Oh, no, no. That's all right. Fuck. He's gone. He's... What the fuck is happening? Where were you? We were looking for you. Yeah, I, uh, sorry. I, I was, uh, I was looking for the party. I, think I, I got an invitation. I think this should work for all of us. Wait. And he pulls that... it out. He pulls out the invitation. Where Wait. did you get this? Well, it's kind of a weird story. <laughs> um, doesn't matter. I, I got it. <sighs> well, Where's the you're... Messiah? Where'd Messiah go? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I know. You're asking, you are asking the wrong fucking person because I followed him through a door and uh, um, I lost him. I lost him and I lost fucking purple. I was fucking chasing. You saw that, right? You, saw, you saw that makeshift. I saw somebody. I saw, I saw a man running. I, I don't, I don't know what he was carrying. He was carrying something. You tell me that's you telling me that's a fucking puppet? Somebody somebody running, sprinting, opening doors. That had to be a human. It had to be. Alright, I don't know. Let's find um let's find Messiah. Let's go to a party, I guess. Yeah. So I think we have lost squandered any opportunity we might have had to lay a trail of breadcrumb crumbs to find our way out of this place. So I think we just have to keep moving and hope for the best. It's the only way out. Is through. The only way and out. And he just he's got the cigarette and he just starts walking. <laughs> in like the opposite direction of the door that they came okay he just starts walking and is there something he's hoping to find he's really looking for the an, an elevator he's still looking for an elevator stairs or you know based on whatever the rules of this place are that we I don't think we could possibly understand the the ballroom that the party is in Okay, looking for the stairs, trying to get to the party uh, or elevator. Um, okay, you start moving down a hallway and you open up a door and that door just opens into a wide horizontal hallway. So you're just one of the many doors in that hallway. <laughs> turn left, turn right. Do you go left or right? It all looks the same. Uh, he pulls out a coin again, same coin that he used before and flips it. Uh, 
tails. She goes left. Uh, left. Go ahead and roll sanity check. 43 under 56. Okay. You continue and continue. No stairs. No ballroom. And you're opening door after door. And it's opening the hallway after hallway. And we see this time, you know, this time is passing. And we go back to Roger. Roger looks up toward this crack in the wall and you can see it's hollow beyond and there's some residual light coming from the room that you're in that's able to kind of shine a light through this large crack now with a lot of hard work careful work you could maybe come go through it like slip through it but it would take it you'd be squeezing by pathfinder parlance uh if not <laughs> maybe almost impossible to get through but you can see through easily enough as this light shines in what it shines into is kind of like a cave. It's like open ground stone and soil. And you get this kind of dry wind that's like blowing from the hole. And you smell the like rich smell of earth and minerals like coming out of the hole. And you can see along the left side and the right side of this cavern are hewn into the rock these small cub cubbies basically like a kindergartner cubby wall it's these small little indentations almost like catacombs or something in the side of the walls on both sides and each one has a bottle inside of it with a name on the outside of the bottle. And the first one on the second row says Roger Cumstone. <laughs> Bot like what do the bottles look like? Like like the ones in the picture? Like the like ones, the the ones, ones in the, the picture. Oh, it's like a mixture alcohol. of brown bo brown bottles, all different sizes. Some <clears throat> look kind of shaped like wine bottles, some are kind of shaped like large beer bottles. What does his look like? His looks like a wine bottle. Brown. Go ahead and roll a sanity check. <laughs> uh, 33 under 61, so crit success. Critical. Okay, and there's other bottles. And there's and other there. bottles, all different names. So Anything else in the there, names. or does it keep going? It just goes off into the darkness. You can't really see. Okay. Cut back to the bathroom door opening. Roger comes out. <clears throat> you see him walking back towards the lady. Thank you for uh, letting me use your restroom. No problem, hun. Good I, luck uh, with the move in. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. And he uh, walks towards the door and uh, turns back around, shuts the door, says, uh, I actually have some friends that are, uh, and Roger's kind of like breathing very heavily. Um, they're, uh, they're thinking about moving in to the building too. Well, they should talk to Mr. Castain. Who's that? Mr. Castain, the night manager. You said you spoke with him. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Castain. Henri. They, uh... They seem to, uh... really like the people that live here. I think you are all... innocent. But can I tell you something? Sure. I don't think that. I think you're all sick. And to quote a friend of mine, the only way out is through. And he grabs a pillow, puts it up to her face, and shoots into the pillow. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god. god. You heard it! 
Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, God. And he just I agree with Rob. blacks out. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Oh, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> and you don't think he's really going to do it? And, and the screen just goes black. Man. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> John McEnroe right. freak out at stuff, oh. but never anything that bad. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe you actually murdered the old woman. This is what everyone was waiting for. <laughs> I'm actually surprised it took this long. I <laughs> 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 Well, very classy of you to silence it. So the yeah, don't yeah, come. Yeah, right, yeah, right. right. Yeah. 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 Oh, where we go from here? Get back here next week and find out. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, God. <laughs>